recording. All right. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, <laughs> my name is Michael Poor, um, and I'm going to be giving a, an introduction to Less today. And for those who do not know, Less is a preprocessor for CSS. So if you're familiar with SAS, it's very similar. Um, Less gets compiled into CSS. Um, same with SAS. Okay, there we go. Um, during this chat, I'm going to be giving you uh, an overview of some of the features, how to set up less on your computer, and then um, tie into um, Elliot's presentation a little with some Flexbox mixins you can add into your, your um, application. So for the setup of less, less is JavaScript based while SAS is Ruby based. So you can set up less on your, in your application three different ways. You can either install it onto your computer using um, Node.js, npm install, um, globally less. And then you can go onto a terminal and compile your less files into CSS manually. Um, you can do it this way. It's not the, the easiest way if you're coding and trialing and error. Um, it's much easier to do it this last way with the IDE, but you can also do it in the browser, which you, um, instead of including CSS files into your HTML, you can include less files. And at time of load, or when someone opens up the browser, it'll automatically compile that less to CSS on the fly. Um, and to do that, you have to include the script um, for the less min JS. And the final way, which is what I use at work, is downloading an, an extension to your IDE. So most uh, coding um, IDEs like VS Code or Brackets, you can install in extensions. And what I use is um, an easy less, which auto compiles your less as you save your, your less file. Script in your, uh, package no, you don't have to do anything like that. You just save your less file and it'll create a CSS file of the same name. So if I have a style dot less that I'm writing, I can just save that. It'll compile to style dot CSS and I can just include style dot CSS in my HTML. You can also import multiple less files into that style.less. And so when um, that style.less gets compiled, it pulls all of your other CSS into the one file and you just have one CSS file. So uh, one of the big features of less is variables. And this, if you've if you've seen any SAS before, I heard y'all talking about that earlier, this is going to be um, very similar to that. So variables like any programming languages, um, it's something you can define once and use multiple places. Now these do have a, a scope with them. So if you define um, a variable at the global level, you can use it throughout your application. You can overwrite that variable within a nested um, CSS structure, which will, um, which I'll, I'll show an example of that a little later. But as you can see here, I have a width variable and a height variable. Width is set to 10 pixels and height is set to the width plus 10 pixels. So when this gets compiled into CSS for my um, header ID, width is 10 and height is 20. So with these variables, you can perform mathematical operations. Um, and I'll go over what you can do later. You can do a, a plus, a minus, um, multiply or divide. Um, next, we have mixins and functions. Now, this is where you can get into some interesting um, functionality with, with less. Um, so your basic mixin will allow you to apply classes to other sections of your your less. So right here I have a bordered class which has a border top and a border bottom. And now in my menu um, link I have the color set and I have the bordered class included. So I can write my border class one time 
and include it anywhere across my application. And same with the post. And this, um, the brackets right here, as you can see, if you have these in when you declare it, this is, well, hold on. No, that's not right. <laughs> if you define your bordered class with the brackets next to it, when it gets compiled into less, that will not be there. You will not see a bordered class. The, the properties of it will just get moved to the menu A and um, post A. If you have variables in your class, like where you declare it on the left, and you want to pass in an argument, can you pass in an argument within those parentheses for customization purposes? Yes. Um, Sorry. <laughs> that's the, the very next mix in I have. Um, you can have uh, parameters to your mix ins, which you define a, a parameter as this one has radius with a default value of five. So I can either pass in a variable or pass in a, um, a size that I want to give it, or I can just call it with no parameter and it'll default to my, um, my five pixels. And this example here is um, setting the border radius to be compatible with all browsers. So um, in my code, when I'm writing, I don't have to do border radius with um, Mozilla, WebKit, border radius default. I just have it defined one place, and I can just call that across my application. So it'll automatically write um, all the extra CSS that I don't want to do deal with. Now you can also do very complicated stuff with recursive mix-ins. Um, so you can kind of treat CSS like a programming language with logical loops, if statements, um, if thens. For this particular example, it's a, a mix-in that you pass in a number and then an index. And when the index is less than or equal to the number, it stops. Or no, while the, um, this is just a while loop, so while the i is less than the number, it'll, it'll keep going. So this one creates um, four different classes, each with, um, I, I guess, an equal spacing of width between them. So I can call this as um, generate columns four, which will say I want four classes of equal, um, percentages. Um, Less also offers several built-in functions. Now these are not mix-ins, they're just, um, just standard functions you would find in a programming language, like a math function. Uh, you can um, call ceiling on a number to um, move it or round it up to the highest, or floor to pull it down you can turn a float value into percentage, you can round a value, um, get a square root. You can also have um, logical um, functions in there like if or a Boolean, just a true or false. The ones I like to use a lot are the color functions, lighten, darken, fade in, fade out. So you can have a, an at hover effect to your CSS, which will darken your, your primary color variable which you can globally define by a certain percentage. So I can have um, consistent styling throughout my application and when I mouse over something it can lighten the variable um, or the lighten the, um, the div plus or minus some percentage or darken it. You also have the access to list function so you can get a length of a, of a list or extract a particular element from a list. You can also get the range of it and um, have an each function to loop through each element of that list. And uh, like a lot of JavaScript stuff. yes, um, less is JavaScript based, so it's it's very similar to JavaScript syntax. Um, and just I forgot to mention this earlier, but this entire presentation is from the less. Um, less CSS.org website and they, they walk you through each of these with in-depth detail and kind of documentation examples and everything and I'll show a link to that at the end okay for nesting um, 
I can't tell you how many times I've banged my head up against the wall trying to write CSS in a nested structure, but less makes that easy. It's, um, I guess, more of a programming mindset. I have my header class or I have my header ID with navigation and logo class under it. And it's just like you would write a function. Um, and then CS, when that gets compiled into CSS, it gets split up into header, navigation, header, logo. So you can kind of have everything um, nice and easy for you to, it's, it's very readable for, for programmers. Next, we have operations. I talked a little bit, a little bit about this earlier. Um, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Um, now, you can do this with variables, um, numbers, or even colors if you'd like. Um, and they even handle different units. So if you have 2 minus 3 cm minus 5 millimeters, it'll result in the very first unit you use, and it'll convert everything else to that. And for colors, you can take a hex value, divide it by two, and get a new hex value color. I, don't, I haven't used this much, but it is available through less. <laughs> you can also define two different variables and multiply those variables together or add those variables together to get a certain percentage. Next, we have namespaces and maps. So for namespaces, you can write a mixin. Um, in this case, it's a bundle mixin with a button class underneath it. And I can um, call this particular button um, mixin by doing a bundle.button. So it treats it as a, a JavaScript object. You can, you can see it as that. So this is just an easy way to um, kind of bundle a group of classes together that you use often so you can define it in one slot and just use it across your application. Now there's, there's also a map syntax, which lets you do a very similar thing. You have a colors mix in with primary and secondary. And in your um, list file, you can do at colors, at secondary, which will, um, be compiled into CSS as green because you have to find secondary as green. Yeah, it's like object. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the map and the namespace is, is very kind of object, uh, a JavaScript object notation where you can either call it by dot something or just um, in brackets as the name. And for scoping, you have your global scope and then you have the scope of your your functions you could you could see it as so I have var set to red globally but inside page I have var set to white so when I call the the var here it looks locally first and if it's not there it'll look for it globally so I can have a global color defined and then just for this particular section I want to overwrite that with a new one but I don't want to change how I'm writing my CSS or less, and I can just keep using the same bar. And importing. So this works kind of <laughs> as you would expect. You can have less file or multiple less file files for your application, and you can import those into other less files. Now, you don't have to include the dot less, but if you have a CSS, you have to include the, the, the path, um, the direct path to it. And just to tie into Elliot's presentation about Flexbox, um, less has a very large community, and they have a lot of people that write useful mix-in files for um, different things. Flexbox has one. Well, let me back out of this and go over here. So you can download this flexbox.less file and import it into your style.less. And it will allow you to write um, Flexbox for all the different browsers. So I have Flex Display. So instead of just writing Flex Display in my 
in my list, I can do the, the dot note or the mix in notation and pass in a value to it, which will automatically write that flex box for the, all the browsers. And you can do that for um, pretty much all of the, the flex options, flex direction, flex wrap, flex, flex flow, order, grow, shrink. And it's just an easy way to kind of containerize everything. So you can, um, well, let me stop sharing and switch over to my other window. If it, if it likes that. I don't know if it did or not, but <laughs> there, we go. there we go. Okay, so here I have my, my flex helper less file um, loaded into my application. I also have a, a global less file, which I have my colors for the application. So I have my primary colors defined, my complementary colors defined, um, some commonly used colors for edit, delete, info, save, um, which are also defined as RGBA or RGBA for um, primary and complement. Um, but to use these globally defined, I just have to import it into one of my files. So at the top of your less file, you can import at globals, which will import all of my global colors in here. I can also have locally defined mix-ins. In this particular case, I have the, the top of my less file has several mix-ins defined, and then down into the less, I, I'm using them. And you can have an at notation um, for less, so at hover will apply these attributes to your element. So you can do an at hover for um, changing the color, light, lighten or darken, um, or you can transform the scale of it. So this particular one here, when you hover over the card circle, it'll change the Z index and then increase the scale by 1.1. So what this looks like, yeah, so, yeah, ever so slightly, it just makes it a little bigger. And you can also, um, for that particular, card icon you just saw, um, it was created at a much larger scale and then kind of scaled down by dividing all of those values by a temporary number. So this is um, the temp value is at 25 view widths. So um, the element was created very large and then everything was scaled down by 25% um, by of the, the window. So it kind of makes it easier to <laughs> build large and then scale the entire element down. I think I have some examples of using the, the flex uh, mix ends. You can call it just by default, um, or you can pass in a row. This is setting the, the flex direction to row, flex wrap, um, just by content center. So this will write the CSS for all the browsers, whether it's um, IE or Chrome or Firefox. Let me switch back over to my other window. If I can find it, Chrome, there we go. Okay. Okay, so that wraps up my chat. Um, so during this chat, I talked about setting up less. Um, I talked about some of the, the key features of less and also some Flexbox mix-ins. And for the resources, the entire presentation was pulled from lesscss.org. Now that website will show you how to set it up. It will walk you through all of the features they have. I didn't go through every single feature of, Le of less because it, it, gets <laughs> it can get complicated with, with logic thrown into it. Um, you have um, several pre-made mix-ins you can import. You can import some animation mix-ins, so you don't have to write your own animations. You just pull the animation file in and do dot spin at this speed, and it'll write all the CSS for you, so I can hover, and then it'll just spin my icon around. 
Um, and here's the the GitHub for the Flexbox mix-in, and I included the, the Flexbox help as well, just to throw in an extra resource. You mentioned one of the differences between less and SAS is that less is JavaScript JavaScript based and SAS is Ruby based. I've recently been learning SAS and it's very different, uh, excuse me, very similar to this, which is slightly different syntax. Yes. There, there is no one greater than the other, if that's what you're going to ask. <laughs> and I knew that was going to be the answer. Is there something that points you in the direction of one rather than the other since they essentially are very similar things? That they are both very similar. Um, the only difference really is preference. What syntax do you prefer? I found less a little easier to learn and understand than, than SAS. SAS had a lot of functionality, but it was a lot of stuff I was never going to use. Um, and less, less only has the two files. You have your, your um, dot less and then you have your dot CSS. SAS has SAS cache. Um, you have your SCSS. And I guess when I was using SAS initially, I was doing the command line um, compiling or setting up a command line watcher for particular files to automatically do it. I think since, since I've used it, they've added a lot of more um, usability stuff, which will automatically compile your, your SAS for you and watch particular files and automatically compile everything. It, it's just preference, really. Any other questions? That was actually going to be my question. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. so do you typically, well, I did, I'll ask you a question. Do you typically um, stay just with less? Do you ever like mix in some CSS with that? Or do you almost do strictly less? It, um, it's, um, I typically write in less, but a lot of it is just basic CSS added in there. Okay. Um, with variables. With, with variables. Okay. I, I, tried to, I tried to keep everything as defined as I can in my projects, um, as far as the color scheme, so I can change it in one spot and it'll just kind of trickle down and then change color everywhere. Is that 90%, because you know, we see all the mathematical operators and a lot of the other fancy, capabilities of it is 90 95 percent of it storing variables and using the nesting and function features just to keep it organized that's mainly what i use it for um i don't do too much of the the functions and the um i have used it before to dynamically create classes that i need for particular elements because um most of the times you're not going to know exactly what you're going to have on your website so you can dynamically create your your HTML and you can dynamically add classes to that with a particular set of rules, whatever you define for it. But in general, if you're going to do heavy math, there's JavaScript. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but they, they do offer a lot, but I mainly use it for variables, mix-ins, the um, functions that they that they offer. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs>